So most articles you're going to use are going to be in this format of a print or an electronic journal where you're just doing author date, article title, journal title, volume issue, page numbers, and then, then either the DOI or the uh, stable URL. Variations to that, um, articles in a magazine are basically the exact same format. The only thing you're going to do is include the month. Most magazines typically come out monthly, and so even though you're getting a volume and an issue, many times it's easier to identify them when you're looking at an index or you're looking at the magazine itself by the month. So do include that month in there. Um, a weird way APA does list full dates is when you list the year, comma, and then the month and the day. Newspapers are also similar to that of you want to give the exact date. And this one's only pulling the month and the day because it is a smaller newspaper, bigger newspapers, um, things that come out nearly daily. You want to bring the exact date of when that article was being published because if an article, if a newspaper like the New York Times has 365 issues in a year, I don't want to go through all 365 issues in 2005. I don't want to have to go through 31 issues in December. I want to know exactly which date so I can get the correct issues. That's the biggest difference of this. Another difference uh, that confuses some students is the page numbers, and so we're going to take a quick look at those. If you're looking at a major newspaper online, we talked about this with websites and with articles of things like the New York Times. If you're looking at this article online, this could have been something that was published within their actual print newspaper, but you cannot tell that from here. You're not getting any sort of page numbers. You're getting the complete article on here. And so you would just cite it very similarly to how you cite an article on a website. Uh, you're taking the author's name. So there's Karen Kraus and Lynn Hetlier. Sometimes I can't think. All right, so for so your two authors, last name, comma, first name. One other thing that sometimes confuses students um, is when you get photos with a name underneath it because they're giving you photo credit. You do not cite this as an author. Um, if they are giving photo credit, that's not an author of the article itself. And so when you're taking information from the text, you want this Kraus and Petlier authors, this uh, Tbalt Camus, not relevant to it. However, if you were taking the photo and putting it as part of presentation, you would want to give this Tbalt Camus as the creator of it. He's creator of the photo, but not the content and the information coming from the article. So if you're ever seeing that, that's not an author you need to list. That's not a person you're listing. Article title. Uh, remember, many times magazines and newspapers when they're on the web here, they kind of get this summary of the article underneath it. That's Really kind of a tagline summary. It's not part of the title itself. And so, date. Sorry, date comes next, not the article title. Not bad. All right, so you're getting under the authors there, August 28th, 2020. You don't need the exact time. Many times blogs, newspapers, websites like this give you that time. Not needed to be included. So, August 28th, 2020. 20, not 2002. Period at the end of that, and then you're giving that article title. I'm going to leave it in the same as that. Um, remember, you do need to change the capitalization. That place, the Tour de France would be capitalized because that is a proper noun. It's the name of a very specific race. Brave and face are not. And so there, so you do need to change that capitalization. Next, you're looking for the newspaper title, which is also the website title, New York Times, and you would follow that up by that URL. So remember, if we are doing websites, you do need to get that complete URL in there. And remember, website and newspaper titles are just like journal titles, just like book titles, they are italicized. And then finally, you would just have to do your hanging index. 
And so if you're finding these newspaper articles online, like the New York Times, the Washington Post, Wall Street Journal, et cetera, and you're just getting it as that website, that's really how you cite it. If you, however, are pulling newspapers from within library databases, so library databases do provide you with good newspapers from around the world, can provide you with really great research. Um, you often, though, get page numbers. So for this one, this is being on page A1. If you have never picked up a physical newspaper, um, newspapers, paper copies are divided into sections of A, B, C, and D. And so that letter is part of the page number. You do need to include it because it starts with A, one through whatever page, goes to B, one through page 10, et cetera. Another thing to include is if it's giving you a city and state location of where the Watertown Daily Times comes from. Many times, newspapers have kind of generic titles. Um, my hometown newspaper was called the Daily News. There's more than one Daily News in the United States. There's more than one Daily News in the world. So which Daily News are we talking about? So for not, things that are not nationally well-known newspapers like New York Times, Washington Post, um, Seattle Times, Los Angeles Times, Wall Street Journal, those things are very well known. Also, the t location of the city, like the Seattle Times, is in the title itself. If you don't have that, many times the newspapers, especially coming out of library databases, will list either a state or a city and state out next to it. You need to include that because we need to know which Watertown are we speaking of that we're talking about Watertown, New York, and that specific newspaper. Um, another example the Post and Courier. Does anyone know where that one's from? Charleston, South Carolina, major newspaper for Charleston. You would not know that from the title of the Post and Courier unless you were familiar with the newspaper. So make sure you're getting that city and state afterwards. Another common thing um, that happens occasionally with databases is either the entire title or the author's name will be in all caps. That's a weird formatting things about websites. You don't need to include that in your actual citations that you would need to change that. So we're looking at Alex Galt. I didn't mean to do that. Okay, there we go. So do change that to just be capitalizing the first letter of the, uh, oops, wrong thing, sorry. <coughs> first word of the last name. All right, August 28th, 2020 again. So remember last, so year comes first and then it's month and day. So we're going more, a little bit more European with that. Remember, close your parentheses, follow it by a period. And this is the entire title. And so for the most part, you want to keep punctuation like the dash, like the colon, um, if you're ever getting quotation marks within the title, you do want to keep that, um, but you do not want to keep the capitalization unless it is the first word. So green is correct. Um, expert would be capitalized because it is um, first word of the subtitle, so it's following that colon. St. Lawrence River is a proper noun. Lake Ontario is a proper noun. Um, and then everything else would be lowercase. So keep that period. There you go. And then we're looking at the name of the newspaper. So that Watertown Daily Times coming out of New York. Make sure you're taking that parentheses of the state or if it's not in the title, it'll be city state. So if it was just the Daily Times, it'd be Watertown, New York, not just New York. And then we are that. following it by a period. Newspapers don't have or following it by a comma. My apologies. Newspapers don't have volume and issues, but because you're listing page numbers after this, you do need to have that as a comma. We're not done with the newspaper info. So it is that page A1. And so we are going to include that, not AI, A1. And then you get a period. And if you had a stable URL, this would be the time to include that. So other places find stable URLs. Remember in ProQuest, we went to that abstract and detail section. Another place, if you're seeing kind of this chain link icon, that's typically the permalink, and that's going to be the stable URL. So if you're finding this out of library resources and you have that chain link saying copy link, document link, permalink, that is what you're going to be taking for those citations. So 
how did you get to it? And then go back and add your hanging indent. So biggest difference with newspapers is you do need that full date. That is your biggest thing that throws students off. Everything else, you can just take the month or just take the year. Newspapers, especially, you have to have that month and day because they don't have volumes, they don't have issues, and you need to know which um, issue it did come out of. So we want that full date. And that kind of wraps up journal articles.